Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for this opportunity to address you virtually at your Euritas conference. I apologize that I wasn't able to make it uh, in person. Uh, I've kept uh, Pierre Luigi uh, informed of some of the events that have occurred in my life that have made it impossible for me to come to Italy at this time. I want to uh, share with you uh, some of the things that have been developing in the world historical situation uh, in which we find ourselves. The U.S. Congress has passed legislation mandating that all government agencies, which a number over 30, military, intelligence, uh, domestic security, uh, economics, uh, energy, all contracting corporations uh, to the U.S. federal government, must by right of eminent domain turn over all evidence pertaining to the UFO phenomenon. And anything that has been gathered by any of these agencies and contracting corporations over the last 75 years, essentially since the second year, Second World War. Congress is in the midst uh, right now uh, with passage uh, probably uh, in the next uh, 30, 40 days of uh, legislation to create a nine person committee of eminent people around the United States that will preside over the gathering of this information and its disclosure to the world public. Uh, in this process, UFOs are being renamed as unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAPs. You may have caught in the news uh, the testimony before the US House of Representatives uh, in July, of a group of whistleblowers, uh, people from the U.S. intelligence and military communities uh, who have become so concerned at the ongoing uh, repression of information around uh, the uh, unidentified anomalous phenomena domain uh, that they filed uh, complaints with the inspector general of the Pentagon uh, and have been, been reporting uh, to the U.S. Congress uh, that uh, the evidence is there and needs to be turned over to the public. I have been asked to go back to Washington and head up uh, the office uh, that will be interfacing with the U.S. Congress and the various government agencies and contracting corporations around the gathering of the uh, evidence and its disclosure uh, to the public. Uh, and that is why I couldn't be with you all uh, here in uh, Tuscany uh, for uh, the conference, because right now uh, I'm in Washington and uh, setting up the office and engaging in uh, the immense and intricate work of ensuring the final passage of the uh, defense authorization bill for 2024, which should be passed and signed around the winter solstice of 2023. Uh, and at that time on Humanity Rising, uh, which is a global broadcast that we do through Ubiquity University, of which I'm president, uh, uh, we will be holding a, a summit uh, on uh, the UAP uh, issue to demarcate this extraordinary moment in human history. When uh, a major government, in this case, the United States, releases over a seven-year process, they're designing this as a seven-year process of disclosure, evidence incontrovertible evidence that we are not alone. That extraterrestrial intelligences exist. 
They've been operating and present on planet Earth for some time. And there is evidence, hard evidence, that demonstrates that we've been visited uh, by a spacecraft uh, and we've been visited by non-human beings. This is a momentous moment. Arguably the most important moment in the history of our species. And if you think about it, since the dawn of time, uh, 250, 300 years ago, when our species, Homo sapiens, first emerged, we've been conquering the terrestrial environment. We've been fighting with each other. We've been seeking to gain uh, supremacy uh, first over every other species, over the environment, fighting to gain supremacy over each other. There's extensive records in the collective memory that there have been visitations by extraterrestrial civilizations and intelligences uh, in bygone eras, uh, you know, tens of thousands of years ago, uh, that will now start to come to light. As for the first time, at a collective level, humanity looks up and embraces the reality that we are in a cosmos filled with life and that much of life out there over eons and eons of light years in far off galaxies on planets that look a lot different from ours, not only has life been nurtured and incubated, but it is so far in advance of humanity that their capacity, as we've seen uh, in the last 75 years, uh, shows an advanced intelligence and technology that literally dwarfs uh, the latest reaches of human uh, capacity. And the opportunity for me to be in the center of this in Washington, while this momentous uh, transition in human consciousness begins to take place, I just must say is, is uh, humbling to me at a very deep level uh, and exciting to me uh, at levels that I can't really fully uh, express. But as I've been thinking, which is uh, the one point that I want to make uh, to uh, all of you, uh, is that the challenge to all of us as we begin humanity's ET moment is to radically reassess who we are in relationship to each other and who we are in relationship to the larger global planetary ecology. One of the things that emerge if you look over all the evidence of all the contact that humans have had uh, over the last 75 years all over the world to military officers and fighter aircraft, to regular uh, farmers in New Hampshire, to a group of school children in Botswana, uh, to people outside Moscow or Beijing and Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, the ETs have been appearing all over. And the consistent message that they've been communicating is stop killing each other. Stop destroying the environment. Humanity is basically acting like a virus. We're in the process of killing our own selves and destroying our host. And the uh, extraterrestrials uh, are communicating that this is not a viable way for humanity to exist on this planet. 
life is rare. Life is precious. Planet Earth has nurtured over time extraordinary manifestations of life. And now the human race is killing it all. And their most urgent concern is about our nuclear weapons. There's cases uh, uh, that have been in the news and 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 incontrovertibly proven of them actually hovering above nuclear silos in the United States and shutting down the nuclear weapon silos. So as we begin our ET moment, we need to all come to a realization that we need as a species to come together and radically change our consciousness and move as quickly as we can from promiscuous and obscene killing at every level and cruelty and exploitation and avarice and greed. And that's just with each other, let alone what we all know that we're doing to the earth, to a posture of radical collaboration with each other and harmonizing ourselves with the planetary ecology so that the human species becomes synergistic with the planet and comes to an awareness for the first time of why we're here. If you think about it, the earth has been inexorably over four and a half billion years nurturing life, diversifying life, sophisticating life, complexifying life, until finally the species Homo sapiens emerged. So capacious, so resilient, so creatively intelligent that we are capable of taking Earth consciousness off the planet and beginning interactivity with galactic civilizations far away. Humanity, I believe, was created by our planet to be her emissaries to the rest of the cosmos and the galactic civilizations that are out there. And yet, ironically, at this moment, we've lost track of the plot. And that's why conferences like Eurotas are so important. They remind us of why we're here. We got to leave the cave and look at the full light of day and come into a realization of our destiny. One of the things that the New Paradigm Institute, which I will be uh, working with uh, in Washington, will be doing is beginning the process of, of developing training programs in ET awareness and communication. Because as people come into a realization that humanity is now in its ET moment, the next question is, well, how do we begin to refine our consciousness so that we can not only become aware of the extraterrestrials, but we can begin to communicate with them because they communicate through mental telepathy. That's one reason why their, their crafts are so difficult to reverse engineer because they don't have like a, a brake pedal and an accelerator pedal and a speedometer. It's everything is done by mental telepathy. So humanity in order to optimize this opportunity, has to radically increase and refine its intuitive and extrasensory and spiritual capacities. So the New Paradigm Institute will be developing trainings. And within this context, I want to point out uh, Asher Lyman, uh, who's in the audience. Asher, you should stand up and, and identify yourself. He's working uh, with me uh, and the Institute to develop this training program. And if any of you 
uh, and your organizations are interested in working with us in developing training programs and ET awareness and communication, contact Asher. And then we'll be in touch with you over the next uh, several months. So I want to thank you, Pierre Luigi, uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, others of you who I've known because I've been to several Euritas conferences in the past. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be in Washington. I'm committed, uh, heart and soul, uh, to working with the U.S. government and organizations, including world religious bodies all over the world, so that as humanity comes into this ET moment, we can optimize humanity's sense of responsibility in a world that is now not devoid of life, but full of life, much of which is far more sophisticated than we are. And we have an opportunity now, collectively as a species, to align and synergize with the planetary ecology and then represent as ambassadors planet Earth to the rest of the cosmos. Thank you all.